Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And today's message is entitled, Look, the fields are white unto harvest. Our whole Great Commission can be summed up in three words, reap the harvest. That's our clarion call. It's our Christian duty, save souls. Now is not the time for laziness, spiritual laziness, or for a little sleep, a little slumber. No, this is the time to get our families ready, our loved ones ready, to get all of our friends ready. We have to get these people saved because Jesus is on his way. There's an old hymn that we used to sing in church when I was a young boy. We don't sing it so much anymore in our churches. I haven't heard it since I was a young boy, but it went like this. Wait a little longer, please Jesus. There are so many wandering out in sin. Just a little longer, please Jesus. A few more days to get our loved ones in. If we would only consider the gravity, the seriousness of those words, it would move us to tears. With the magnitude of the reality, it should move us to work. It should get us working in the harvest fields as we see these days that we're living in growing more and more evil. The signs of the times are screaming, Jesus is on his way back. Get ready. He's coming back real, real soon. Even now, we can almost hear that trumpet blast that the scriptures called the last Trump. Let us get into the message now. Let us look at John chapter 4, verse 35 through 38 as we go into our message. Look, the fields are white unto harvest. Do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I send you to reap for that which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered their labor. Jesus here, here Jesus asks a rhetorical question. In verse 35 he says, do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Jesus is drawing an analogy here. He said, you are saying that there are still four more months before you have to prepare for the harvest. So I can do other things while I wait. And why not? I have four more months before I have to stop worrying about the harvest. Then he hits them with this reality in verse 35, or the end of verse 35. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. In other words, some of you are worrying about your earthly treasures or your, your, your physical harvest. You, you're, you're worrying about a financial harvest, but what you need to start worrying about are souls, to get these souls ready. You're worried about, what is it that I can get out of life? You're so busy climbing the corporate ladder, but you're ignoring the true harvest, the most important harvest of all. It's the spiritual harvest, the harvest of souls. There's no greater harvest than that. And the harvest is ready for the reaping right now. The fields are white unto harvest. So I looked up that why that, uh, that is. Why would the fields be white? Because when I imagine the green, they're all golden. And the pictures that I've seen, they're all golden. They're not white. So 
I looked up, why would a harvest be white? And then I text a farmer friend of mine to confirm what it is that I had found out. And he confirmed it for me. Thank you. Apparently, there are several reasons. It could be fungus or some other type of disease. And these diseases are usually caused by lack of proper watering. It could be insect infection, infestation or the lack of harvesting, or in other words, not harvesting the green on time. But in every instance of the green fields being white, it leads to the death of the green. And I thought about this. And every account can be related back to the harvest field. The lack of proper watering can be related to the lack of evangelism. In fact, in, in, in insect infection or infestation can be due to the lack of discipleship. Because then the enemy comes in and, and he puts all kinds of thoughts that infest the minds of true believers or, 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 or young believers. The lack of harvest is due to lack of evangelism, lack of people share their testimony, due to not enough workers. What am I on about? I'm on about the fields are white on the harvest in your world. People are dying without being reaped for the Lord. In other words, they're not being evangelized. They're not being saved. They're, being, they're not being told of the goodness of Jesus. They're not being saved. Now, I want you to notice what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 and 38. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So instead of pray, people praying to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers, they would rather stop believing and become another statistic themselves. Meanwhile, there are those who are no better off. The people are no better off because you just stop believing in God. Now, there's one less voice being shut up. There's one less voice not telling the goodness of Jesus. And they're still lost. People are still lost. They're still destined to spend an eternity without Jesus, without a savior. And that's the reason why Jesus said, pray for laborers, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send workers into the field to harvest the fields because they're white unto harvest. Jesus knew what the end of the unharvest green would be. Just like those, the real green, it would lead to death. So the, the, the souls, if they're not harvest, will lead to death. So he had compassion on these people. He wanted them saved. So pray, pray, he told his disciples, pray. Look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed. And helpless like sheep without a shepherd he had compassion for the crowds and he still has compassion for the crowds because they were harassed and helpless and he still has compassion for us today those people were like sheep without a shepherd they were stray sheep had no direction home, had no protection from the wolves. They had no covering without hope or direction, just wandering vagabonds upon the earth. God wants more than that for us. He wants good for us. He wants to restore you. 
He wants to give you back what we had in the Garden of Eden. Look at what Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 29, 11, verse 14. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes. Do you suppose that this was written for the Jews only? I say no, certainly not. It was written for us as well. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. I know the plans. These plans are plans of blessings, plans of prosperity. Be it spiritual or not, they're plans of prosperity nonetheless. The Lord wants to put that upon us. He wants to give us good things, plans of shalom, peace. Plans to give us a future. Plans to give us a hope. Plans, good plans. Plans, if you want them, they're there for the taken. Like the scriptures teach, hope in the Lord, for that is where our hope comes from. God is our hope, and He is a very present help in our times of trouble. Hope on Him for our hope. And our help comes from the Lord, our God. Our job, therefore, is to partner with God and preach the full gospel like Jesus, like Peter, like John, and like Paul and the other disciples did. Look at what Matthew said about Jesus in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. But very few people want to partner up with God and preach and teach the word of God today. And especially not the full gospel. You're a heretic if you so much believe that there might be healing still today. If you only believe that the wonder-working power of God might just be strong enough to last past the first century, you would be a heretic. These people won't go into the mission fields. They're content letting someone else do all of the lifting, heavy lifting or light lifting. They will let someone else do the work. While Jesus is saying, look, the fields are white unto harvest. I need workers. I need you. But folks are like the farm animals that I read in that story when I was just a child. The story of the little red hen. There's several versions to the story. But the gist is this. The little red hen found some wheat uh, greens. And she wanted to plant them. So she went to her friends, the, the other farm animals. And she asked, Will you please help me plant these? And no one wanted to help her. So she went and she planted them herself. Then she, she asked, would you help me to weed, to water? No one wanted to. So she did it herself. And they began to grow. And the, the, the seeds, the, the, the wheat came out. And it was golden. It was time for harvest. So she went back to the other farm animals and said, Will you help me harvest the green? But no help came from the animals, so she did it herself. Then she went, she said, will you help me grind this wheat into flour? But they all refused, so she did it herself. Then she said, will you help me knead this, this flour into dough? And again, they all refused, so she did it herself. She asked, would you help me bake a bread out of this dough that I needed? But none of her fellow farm animals was inclined to help. So she did it herself. When the bread was baked, the little red hen set the, the, the bread in the window and that tantalizing aroma began to fill the air and the other farm animals smelt 
that pleased in aroma, and their mouths began to water, and they gathered around. And so she said, who will help me eat the bread? And they all wanted to partake. They all wanted a little slice of the bread. They all wanted to taste the product of her hard work, or the product of her labor. Everyone wanted a little piece. But the little red hen said, no. No one helped me plant. No one helped me water. No one helped me reap. No one helped me grind. No one helped me knead. No one helped me bake. So I did all the work myself. No one else wanted to help do the labor. No one wanted to work. Therefore, I did it myself. Therefore, I will eat the bread all by myself. And she did. The moral of my illustration is this. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter in. You have to do the will of the Father, Father according to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Everyone wants to, quote, unquote, go to heaven when they die. But very few are living for Jesus. Very few are doing what it takes to get in, to go to heaven when they die. But everyone wants to go. But no one wants to labor in the fields. Everyone seems to be so caught up with their own life, with their own situation, caught up in their own me time. To the extent where the things of God suffers. Meanwhile, Jesus is saying, look, the fields are white on the harvest. I need workers to bring the harvest in. Otherwise, souls will be lost forever. Hurry, hurry, I tell you. Time is running out. And no one's moving. Very few is taking the time to even listen. They're too busy on TikTok. They're too busy watching these videos, these reels. They're too busy playing video games. They're too busy watching television to care about a lost and dying world. But listen, Jesus is not asking to labor for nothing. He doesn't want you to put all your strength, all your time for nothing. Just like the farm animals who would have partake in that eating of that nice freshly baked bread, if that only helped, if that only put their back into the work, they would have been rewarded for their labor. You too will be rewarded for your labor. For whatever you do will not be done in vain for the Lord. Because God is no man's debtor. Look with me at verses 36 and 37. Jesus says, Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life. So that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. Just as I said, it is like the story of the little red hen. If you work, that is, if you will only put your back into and participate in the labor, you will certainly participate and partake in the reward. But you cannot have one without the, the, the other. You cannot have reward without the labor. And you will not have labor without the reward. The two goes hand in hand. Paul told the Corinthian church concerning himself and Apollos, he told him this, he who plants and he who waters are one and each will receive his wages according to his labor. In other words, if you work, you will receive your wages. You will not labor in vain. Verse 9, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. We Christians are the workers. The people are the fields. The harvest are souls. I remember many years ago, I volunteered at, uh, as a counselor uh, for, for those who went, went through this high-impact Christian presentation back in Florida, when we lived in Florida. Uh, I think it was called the 99. And one uh, of, the, 
a young man who went through, he came to my table and, and as I began to speak to him, he boldly told me that he was an atheist and he would not believe in a God who would send people to hell because they didn't know Jesus. The problem with that statement is that instead of him going into the field uh, uh, and begin to tell about Jesus, begin to win lost souls to prevent them from going to hell, he added to the fields. He added to that harvest field by refusing to believe himself. So, so just so that you fully understand what the situation is here, Instead of working to save souls for an eternity in that lake of fire to save them from going to that place and getting a reward for it, he would rather stop believing and join them in the flames. That's just crazy talk. That is the epitome of foolishness. If someone had that or if everyone had that attitude, the whole world would be lost. None of us would be saved because no one would tell. But instead, we have brave, courageous men and women like Richard Warmbrand, Corey Ten Boom, Jonathan Edwards, John Wesley, Amy Carmichael, George Whitfield, John Calvin, Gladys Alwood, John Wycliffe, and many, many others. This world is not our home. We're just pilgrims passing through. Peter wrote of us Christians like this in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellences of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are called to proclaim his excellences. Whose excellences? God's, Jesus's excellences, meaning his fullness, everything that he is and everything that he gives including salvation for our souls, healing for our body, and empowerment through His Holy Spirit. So in closing, let me ask you, do you believe that everyone will spend eternity in one place or another? Do you believe that everyone will spend eternity either in a lake of fire and flames or in blissfulness? No more hurt, no more pain, no more sorrow. If you do, then let me ask you, are you working hard to reap the harvest? The harvest field is white. It's white. The fields are white in your world. Are you working to reap the harvest in your little section? If you're not, can I please encourage you Start. Begin to win souls. Begin to tell of the goodness of Jesus. Begin to tell of all that he has done for you. If you haven't accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, would you like to? Would you like today to be the day? If you would like to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross. Thank you for giving me your free gift of salvation. Help me to live for you. I want to be a worker in your fields. I want to be a harvester for the fields of souls. Help me to work. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And as usual, I suggest that you buy yourself a Bible. Begin to read your Bible. Highlight those verses that are meaningful to you. Those promises that you can stand on. And 
whenever you're, they're, you're tempted, whenever there's sorrow, there be, read those, those, those verses and they will lift you up. They'll give you strength and they'll encourage you. Find yourself a Bible-believing church that believes in the power of the resurrection of Jesus who believes there's a right way and a wrong way, and that believes that his power has not diminished. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is that you should be doing. He'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want to say thank you so very much for joining us every week. We appreciate you. We love you. I'm Kenny. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.